Welcome to the GAP Summit 2018. Um, Melinda Richter, Global Head of Johnson & Johnson Innovation, JLabs. Um, it is great to have you here at the GAP Summit 2018. And I was wondering, how have you found the GAP Summit so far? Uh, well, first of all, the setting of the GAP Summit is incredible. You can feel a sense of gravity around the topic area of health. Um, and the people that you meet here, whether it's the incredible, powerful speakers that have done amazing things in their lives and they're sharing their stories with us, or whether it's the energizing new talent that we're meeting here, the young leaders that are from all over the world that um, are bright and passionate and are going to make a real difference in this world. Uh, it's a super exciting place to be. How will initiatives such as Global Biotech Revolution and the GAP Summit, with a focus on international early career professionals, shape the biotech industry in the decades to come? Well, listen, what I've learned is that this industry has been shaped by people, by individuals who get really passionate about something that touches them, a place where they have some knowledge that they can make a difference by applying it to their passion. And um, they can make an impact for people all over the world. Uh, Dr. Paul Stoffels, who's our chief science officer, is a man who's made an incredible difference for HIV patients and infectious diseases and developing countries. Um, and, uh, you know, what we've done at Johnson & Johnson Innovation is about making a difference for entrepreneurs. So they really have a shot at getting their solutions to the people who need them. So um, this is the place where you come no matter who you are, if you have passion, if you have a, a knowledge, a skill, a talent to apply to that passion, if you come here, you'll get knowledge, you'll get contacts, you'll get a community, and you'll get inspired. I can't imagine anything better than that. So what do you think, why is it important for the leaders of today to engage with the leaders of tomorrow? Well, because um, if we help those leaders of tomorrow, we give them the skills, the knowledge, the context, but more importantly, the confidence. Uh, I can't tell you how many people out there think it's only people like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates that make a difference in this world, and that's not true. It's people like you and me, everyday Joes, that if they get the confidence, they can accomplish really remarkable things. And, so when you're a patient on that hospital bed and you're hoping somebody's out there fighting for you, well, these are the people we're going to need to be out there fighting for those patients. Um, and listen, every voice can, can make a difference. So telling from your experience, um, what are the most significant emerging trends when it comes to innovation and which advice would you give to leaders of tomorrow? You know, in the emerging trends of innovation are just so many areas. That's what's exciting about it. Whether you're getting into um, genomics or the microbiome or 3D printing or robotic surgery uh, or most importantly getting in the area of prevention of health um, and what are all the behavioral uh, modifications we can help with to prevent disease from happening in the first place. There are so many exciting areas. It's really about everybody finding something that they're passionate about, that personally speaks to them. Um, and I think there's such a variety of people and a variety of interests, that's not the problem. The problem is to say, here's my goal. I'm going to stay focused on that goal. I'm going to meet with everybody I can, bring all the resources together that I can, and no matter what comes in my way, no matter how many times I get knocked down, I'm going to get back up because I know there's somebody out there who's going to benefit from this. So um, I'm really excited about the potential of what all these young people can do. So you have uh, great experience with innovation, but what would you say, what are the biggest obstacles uh, to R&D productivity? Um, so there are so many different stages along the way to getting a product to market, and most importantly, in drugs. Uh, you know, I come from the tech industry. 
in the tech industry, you can give a couple of guys a couple of computers and a couple hundred thousand dollars and a couple years later they can turn around and sell that innovation to a big company for a couple hundred million dollars. In the life science industry, particularly in drug development, it takes you at least eight to twelve years to get a drug to market in billions of dollars. So, you know, from from the outside looking in, when I got into this industry, I realized it's so difficult to get investment because it's so long and hard and expensive and risky that we really have to figure out how to take each of the phases of drug development and try to make it cheaper and faster and easier. Um, and so, you know, my focus has been on the front end of the innovation system. How do we make it much more affordable and accessible and cost effective for entrepreneurs who have a passion and a certain part of health who want to make a difference to get started, to get to an early proof of concept before they have to raise a bunch of money and, and uh, get access to capital equipment and resources and infrastructure so that they can make their dreams happen. So that's the area of R&D that we focus on and I think we've made an incredible difference in shaving down the cost and the time to get innovation started. Now there's still many different parts of the value chain that need to be innovated on and certainly there are companies like Transcelerate, or rather I should say an organization like Transcelerate, that's focused on, on clinical trials. How do we make clinical trials more cost efficient and time efficient so that everybody wins? And it's uh, a place where a number of companies are coming together to partner to create efficiencies because that's the right thing to do for patients. So there's a lot of initiatives going on. It's really about finding something um, out there where you can make an impact. There's still lots of room for improvement in the industry. Your vision at Johnson & Johnson J Labs, um, how can J Labs support promising startups? So um, at Johnson & Johnson, we believe the best science and technology should become the best solutions for patients and consumers all over the world. And if we really do believe that, we also have to be humble and say that the best science and technology is just as likely to come from outside the walls of a big company like j and is inside. But when it's out there, those innovators face many more hurdles when they're out there on their own to creating that company and helping it to be successful so their solution gets to market. So our goal is to take down those hurdles for those entrepreneurs, to give them all the resources they need to ensure that the best science and technology has the best possible chance. And then as we get to know those innovators and their technology, and the, if they're interested in us being a partner and we're interested in them as a team and a technology, then we can do a deal with those companies and help them through those different uh, stages of growth so that you know along the way we're de-risking it and making sure patients get access to it. So that's the focus of Johnson & Johnson Innovation. So if you're thinking about a passionate uh, young person, young entrepreneur um, with this vision for um, either a biomarker or a clinical platform, at, in terms of market readiness, at which stage would you like to be approached? Uh, we talk with entrepreneurs very early on, sometimes before they even have a company. In fact, we have this um, vehicle called the Quick Fire Challenges. The Quick Fire Challenges are when we look for solutions or technology anywhere from around the world uh, to solve a particular problem or to, to plug in into a particular opportunity that we have. Um, and we ask for not just companies to apply, but people with ideas. And we know that innovation exists everywhere, but sometimes people don't have access to people like who you meet here at this conference. And they don't have access to capital, they don't have access to infrastructure and capital equipment and all kinds of experts and resources, and so their idea stays just an idea. Our goal is to find anybody's that has an idea with potential and to help wrap around their idea with you know the the kinds of tools and information that might actually make it to the patient uh, and that's really exciting so any stage of growth we're interested in having a conversation 
Great. Thank you for the interview.